let's get in a sense of ground zero for that. I'm joined in by correspondent Jagrati Ravi, who's joining us live from Washington, D.C. at this hour. Let's quickly go across to Jagrati. Jagrati, thank you for joining us on this live broadcast. Now, help our viewers gain an understanding as to why has Donald Trump threatened to invoke a never-used constitutional authority to adjourn the Congress? The president um, believes that uh, Democrats are, he claimed that Democrats are blocking appointments um, to uh, certain positions in his administration, which he believes um, he needs to fill and that he says it's very hard to govern without them, especially during a pandemic. So he um, has threatened to adjourn uh, Congress um, in order to fill those vacancies. Now, um, it has never been done in history. A president has never, ever done this um, in the entirety of the history of the United States. Um, and and whilst the president might have the constitutional power to do so, he has in very, very limited uh, circumstances the power to do this. And this is if and when both chambers, um, both Congress, uh, both uh, the House and the Senate, if they cannot agree um, on an adjournment period, on an adjournment date, then the president can step in and adjourn Congress. But in this case, they, they have agreed on a return date. Um, and so uh, it's, it is quite extraordinary that the president has said this. Right. Jagrati, the U.S. death toll has now topped 28,000. Focusing on today's press briefing, take us through the highlights. We're also learning that the president has cast doubt on China's death toll figures. The briefing today, um, really, uh, the, some of the main lines are that um, the president is going to announce uh, the reopening of several states um, tomorrow. He's going to speak to state governors and he's going to make an announcement um, about the reopening of various economies. He's saying that sev several states, um, it'll be a gradual process. Some states, uh, and it will depend upon the level um, uh, of the uh, outbreak in those states. Um, some states, he said, could even open before the May the First deadline. Um, so it's going to be a gradual process, um, but that is something that we're going to hear more about tomorrow. He's talked repeatedly about, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, etc. And he's this push to reopen the economy has been at the forefront of the president's mind over the last few days now. Um, so that's uh, something we're going to hear about. Um, this issue of the adjournment of Congress, another um, key uh, line that came out of this briefing. Um, he repeated his attacks on the World Health Organization um, for what what he's called its mismanagement of the outbreak, um, its support, uh, its influence uh, by China, um, and the president's criticisms of China and the World Health Organization, that they were slow to respond to the outbreak in the initial stages, that they didn't release um, data uh, that showed the extent of the outbreak and the transmission of the virus. These are all concerns that um, people other than the president have, the conservatives in the Republican Party. Um, they have been uh, talking about this for a while now, pushing um, for action, both on the World Health Organization and China. But there are others who also are um, you know, reporting that's being done health professionals talking, questioning um, the, the role of the World Health Organization and China in the early stages of the outbreak. But the consensus seems to be that now is not the time to withdraw funding. Um, as you played that clip from that doctor who illustrated right. it perfectly, right. that the World Health Organization works on the front lines extensively. So now is not the time to withdraw funding from them. Absolutely. The American Medical Association has urged Trump to reconsider his decision regards, with regards to the withdrawal of the funding. On that note, now, the Federal Reserve has warned on lower employment in the United States with business conditions taking a colossal hit since retail sales and factory output have posted historic declines in March. Is there any stimulus being prepared by the Trump administration to provide some sort of insurance to the unemployed? Well, the president has um, uh, issued, there have been several stimulus packages that have gone through Congress. And um, there's uh, measures such as um, checks that are going directly into people's bank accounts to help them through this period, funding loans available to small businesses um, that can be waived as long as they retain their employees. So there are measures that are being passed through Congress to protect the economy, to protect small businesses. Only yesterday, the president announced a package for um, airlines, uh, another industry that 
that has been severely hit by the outbreak. Um, but of course, the concerns about the economy continue and they're shared by countries all over the world who've had to shut down right. um, because of the coronavirus outbreak. And this is one of the reasons why the president has been so keen to push for a reopening of the economy. And he's having to balance this consideration with public health considerations and fears of um, the p possible spikes uh, again, should they reopen the economy to, uh, of certain states too early. So that is something they want to avoid. Right, indeed, it is a very tricky dilemma. Now, Donald Trump's list of economic advisors names Sundar Pichai and Satya Nadella and, of course, four other Indian Americans. We, you know, th they will be also focusing on these key areas. Do share those areas of focus in order to resurrect the U.S. economy. What are, go what are these areas going to be? Well, at the moment, these are early discussions. The president met with business leaders from um, all, uh, in, from vast numbers of industries. Um, you know, he, he talked about um, the hospitality, retail, transportation, um, infrastructure. He's talked a lot about stimulus for all of these areas. And the thing that a lot of businesses and health professionals are actually saying is that they, what they want to see and what they are concerned about is the need for ramping up virus testing before employees can come back to the workplace. They want to see people back in the workplace, but they need to do it safely. So this clearly seems to be, according to the reporting on this, one of the main considerations that businesses have as well as health experts. Absolutely. And let's hope uh, that uh, this, this entire team of Donald Trump's economic advisors helps in resurrecting the U.S. economy, which, of course, is in a shambles at the moment. On that note, thank you so much, Agrati, for joining us on this live broadcast and bringing us all those latest details.